All right. So since the last uh, session, I did some maneuvering around. I moved a lot of uh, simulation stuff out of the the bring up applications main source directory, put it in the subdirectory called simulation, along with the YAML IMEX stuff into the subdirectory of that. I also moved a lot the armature resource type, the pool, the associated pool, and the loader out of faux resource and put into bring up application. Because the resource library, faux resource library was not originally supposed to be a catch-all for some random <clears throat> resource stuff, but to be like the, the uh, like the utility, not the utility library, but the library where the core com, comp, um, elements, I suppose, framework elements were supposed to go. And it's kind of gotten away from that since I kind of originally had the resources there and the infrastructure for that. And it kind of got shifted over to simulation. And I want to try to reuse faux resource for resource specific items. For example, uh, oh yeah, and another thing I did all offline was to move a lot of the uh, other um, simulation objects away from C++ inheritance. So I moved, uh, I think I did last time, like just the loader perhaps. But I've also moved the resource pool, the component pool and the system data away from uh, having their own types that they used to inherit and using C++ inheritance for the dynamic casts towards using a uh, you know, uni uh, a unique structure type value, which is just an integer defined through the type defs of whatever. For example, down here, the type defs, yeah, like this, starting from a specific ID. So, at this point, I have left to do is the create resource, the, re, the resource create info, which is still heavily, fairly used uh, in several interesting locations. Now, this wouldn't be too bad, except for the fact that I use a shared pointer for it in a couple of locations, because moving down to, let's say, where, 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 where? In the registrar, whoops. In the registrar, I have a bit of a problem <clears throat> in that if, uh, yeah, when I'm doing like a load, I make a copy of the shared pointer. And then I use that because during the process of it being loaded from file, like the specific create info, it could potentially be changed in the meantime, which means that the, re the create info that's associated with the image is poof, gone. But um, it may still be like in part being used as part of the load function. So I cannot just arbitrarily delete it just from one place or necessarily the other location because it could be in use by one or more other locations. I don't know. So I can't exactly... And of course, shared pointer needs to know like how do you destroy things up front. And I also have, uh, and because of that, I'm using a shared base for the shared pointer. That means you know C++ inheritance is kind of required for that, which I don't want to be the case. Um, <clears throat> So if I was to replace create info base, this structure here, I'd need two things. I would need to have, you know, the S type again to specify what specific create info version this is. And, you know, to be able to dynamic cast or not dynamic cast, but like figure out what version it is at runtime of the structure. What, what, I'm, what am I processing? What is this? representing. I would also need, you know, some kind of, um, you know, atomic, I guess, int, something like this, which says, you know, what, how many, you know, reference count for, for this shared object, for this pointed to object. And while I can maybe justify having like S type be a common element to all trade infos, like all downstream developers would have to do, both of them mm, 
Not so much. That's a bit more difficult to deal with. That's not really going to happen, especially for like an atomic type. Trying to figure out how to deal with like, and of course, not only that, I'd have to like every downstream library would have to like know exactly the procedure on how to like reference count like inside of the object. And it's, it's just, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Not unless I abstract some of this stuff away. So, where does that leave me now? That leaves me back to the, re the faux resource library here. The only thing that's left is the log. log category category faux reach okay so i need a new thing at this and i want to make sure it's c compatible from the beginning so i need to kind of have some kind of i need to have a core part for resource create info that the user only interacts with through a small set of functions, but is otherwise um, I don't know, not necessarily public. I want to basically be able to like go through info, create info, resource create info, almost as if it was a handle without, and I want it also to be fairly customizable at the same time. So this is what I have as an idea. So first of all, let's get that copyright notice in there. Always got to have that. Uh, for resource create info. Uh, just plain old H. Find that. And that. Okay, that's great. I need uh, something that says, you know, Where is it? Ah, this. I need this. The extra and C stuff for uh, make sure if it's C plus plus, then it make sure it like considers all symbols and stuff in here as plain old C. So, uh, if I want to deal with a handle, I need to include the faux handle thing. I am also going to be doing. Am I dealing doing with logs? No. Mm, error code, maybe. Not sure. Okay. You know, let's say uh, faux results, faux resource result. So we'll have error codes. Success equals zero. We still need that, and we're still going to need some other error type codes, which does mean I'm going to need, because this is C, I need to include foerrorcode.h, that. I need to define the handle, which is going to be fo resource create info. So what am I, what, what do I need, right? What did I, what was I going to add to this? <clears throat> just on, just here, struct, let's say this implementation. Okay, great. I need, I'm going to put this below faux simulation so it's going to have it's just going to use plain old type uuid maybe i can have like a type def up here that says you know type def uh faux resource info type int or is it the other way around int to that there we go so it's this create info type 
Um, the okay, standard atomic int reference count ref, ref count. Um, and I need a pointer to the actual data, which is variable. So what this would this would all be like create cpp. Whoops. 2022, I need to include resource create info h. That's great. And uh, this is an empty namespace. We'll then need to info define you know, handle. Handle casts. Save that. Photo find handle cast about resource. Great info. With the object type, the implementation type, <clears throat> followed by the handle type. I need to include atomic. So, how would this type even be used? I need a, okay, first of all, I need to, oh, I also need to include I need to be able to export things. So, faux res export, uh, faux error code need the create function so info create resource create info which had which is this type <clears throat> type um, size t uh, so the size of the create info struct that I'm that's being embedded as part of this because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have a case where I'm gonna have like two different uh, allocations. This is going to be one single allocation that has both uh, this implement this whoop, whoops whoops this plus like the other data just after this. So it's you know th this plus you know, data, which is pointed to by p data. So it'll be like an offset of a few bytes from this, but it'll all be in one single larger allocation. So I can actually save just a little bit on the allocation side. I don't have to have multiple allocations. It's one larger allocation. I like that. So I don't have to go crazy. So it the data, the data, the um, data is still managed internally. I think. Would that be enough? Would that be good enough? Not entirely sure. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to deal with destruction. But that's a bridge for later. So we have this star p create info. So we create it. We also have you know uh, destroy uh, destroy. Hmm. Resource create info ref count. Get ref count or just ref count? Get ref count. So it's not this, it's just create info. That. Uh, there's no error code to return from that. And I can just return the integer from that. So one, two, three for increment, decrement. Not sure about arbitrarily incrementing decrement. In, it's arbitrary increment and decrement. Hmm. That does make a bit of sense. 
I can work with that. And ultimately returning the data itself. Get data. Okay. So moving on to the other side here. So I need to I need that. So that'll be actually one of these guys. Okay. So when I am creating this, if it's a single allocation that I need to say something along the lines of like size, so what? The size of the allocation would be maybe the size of, okay. Plus equals size of the actual thing, which we're kind of prefixing onto the front of it, I guess. Yes. So then at this point, we'd say auto star p new ci equals that star. We malloc the new thing, which is the new set, which is the new size. Okay. If p new ci equals null pointer, so there was a failure to allocate, we need to return. Turn, turn our first new error code, which is pro resource error post out of memory allocation failure, something like that. I'm just going to like. Okay, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to have a look at exactly what Vulcan says. No, nope, not quite. <clears throat> give me, give me, give me, give me. Error, memory map failed, out of host memory. Okay, and that'll be the error code that we're going to throw out of here. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's not there yet. Otherwise, if we continue on p new ci. I need to set some things. I need to set the type equals type p new ci. Count equals zero. Can I set it an equals? Does it have to be an atomic int? I mean, it could maybe not be. Because I can't assign, if I try. <clears throat> equals this s type or type equals type. I say dot ref count equals zero and then I say hey you know uh, dot p data equals char star uh, p new ci plus size of this I need to get the error code stuff done. Code by H. Nope, that. 
Okay, and we want to move these over to that. Great, thank you. Is there anything else I even use when I attach to this? Nope. That's it. So create error code. Let's have a look here. This is basically the same thing. 2022 error code include for resource. Error code. Result. That and that. Look at that. Versus this. Include error code. We got close that up. Close that up. Let's move this over. So we got this, this, error category. Like this is just local. So boom, boom. Category, there we go. Mm. This, 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 clear all this. The other error code I had was so, sorry, <clears throat> you're not going to the right location, or or I, do I have to run this to get everything to break horribly? You started here and it ends here. So what are you what are you whining about? Does this one have a problem? Are, <clears throat> am I supposed to have this stuff outside like this instead, perhaps? This makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, we're here. Right. The other error code that I currently have is this one. Thank you. And then what we got going on down here? What's what's all this business about? Okay, yeah. When things go wrong, they really. Oh, uh, so this is because of <clears throat> I'm trying to convert straight from the result straight into the C version of the error code, my effect copy of the standard error code. Can't quite do that, but what I can do is this, right? That's not great, but it'll work. And then, yeah, I have this because of the integer going on in here. Now, Do I, does it need to be like an at specific atomic type like this? I might be able to get away with, I mean, is there really anything stopping me from doing this? Like there should be some standalone f functions, like compare exchange strong and weak or whatever. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. Uh, yeah. You know what? It's not worth it. So we'll just say, hey, you know, I'll just assign a few things like this and I'll call it 
a day like that. That and P new CI is that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't need that anymore. Then I just say, you know, P new uh, create info equals resource and uh, create in handle to handle P new CI. Just like that. Okay, destroy, mm, not quite there yet. Yeah, okay, auto star, p create info. I just gotta do these other ones. So equals resource from handle. Gotta return that. So that's plus plus, minus minus. That'll, the atomic nature will take care of the whatever's going on in there. And then this is just returning T data like that. Destruction's still not quite on top of that, but okay. Now, one thing I also would want to take care of here is the fact that size is probably not, this is probably not a really a great indicator. Like, I don't want to do size of this plus that because there may be an alignment requirement for the type. So let's say I have like a size T alignment. So what I do is, you know, uh, size T offset equals size of the, this So that's the, that's the starting offset. Now, if alignment greater than one, I guess, I just, whatever. If it's not equal to zero, is the point. Uh, then offset will have to be plus equals, let's say offset, which is the size of the thing. Mod. Uh, kind of put that there. Modulus. What? Alignment that's provided. So the leftover of the alignment from dividing it from that will give us the full offset that we want, I think. Maybe. So what would happen is it would become, sorry, offset plus size. And then this becomes this plus offset. Yeah. I'll have to check that out in the main application for test or can I actually just test? No, no, no. Main application. Well, I have to make a test applicate a test uh, for this anyway. So is a spin it up right now, right now. That and that, these are both things I'll be wanting right here. Error code is always good to have. So we've got faux resource. Uh, 
including the error code, that'd be correct. Okay. If build tests. Okay. Does this even compile? No. No, it does not. Why? What's going on? Create info, HPP. Oh, right. Yeah. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. Whole bunch of visibility stuff to do with, let's say, this. Oh, I'm compiling with GCC, aren't I? Hold on. I got to stop that. That's. Not great. Okay, so that's way better. That's a better uh, message output from the compiler. Thank you. GCC is just a bit uh, off about things. Or not off, it's just more... Um, I just don't like its output as much. And I want to add, add... I wanted to add the address sanitizer again as well. I had it for uh, testing something else. Um, so it's here, error code, right? Okay, so make... Actually, like make test or yeah, if I make test, yes, 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 please give me everything. This is still debug. Good. Uh, do I have code coverage? No, let's turn that on and let's recompile again. Okay, so that's back on. Uh, and I changed up the error codes to be correct, but uh, resource test is here. Good. So then I want to do like create info. And I want to make a test that checks like, you know, uh, if it's 22, yeah. Oh, resource create info by H. Correct. I need CPP. Great. So what I need here is to test Gibbs Police Resource Test. Test. Okay. I'm gonna check alignment real fast. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to Type, which is you know whatever type. Uh, it's just 123 alignment of 64 size of I don't know 32 and <clears throat> this CI. That's what's coming out here. And I want to check the alignment. I want to make sure that the alignment of it is correct. So. How do I do this? Require, let's say, okay, so first things first, I need to like convert it to like a void star or okay, yeah, void star of whatever this is, which is CI. And I want to module it by, let's say, 64. I want to make sure that equals zero. 
Now that's probably not going to be... Okay, if I can I put this in a little bit fine. Macro. Byte count, or just bytes, yeah. I mean, does this even work? I don't know. Mm. Point star, okay, I need to convert it to something else. An int pointer? Or maybe an unsigned U int pointer T. There it is. Convert to a pointer, then convert to that equals, make sure that equals zero. That whole thing. So yellow, the blue, the blue, yeah. Does, does that work? That is, oh, of course, the CI won't be the thing is that I'm checking. I'm checking, uh, so it's 32 bytes aligned right now. The size is 32, it's aligned to the 64. Um, but again, like this is aligned. Okay, that does actually make sense. That's aligned to the, but what I want to do is the, so, Resource get data for CI. Is that aligned? Maybe not. Or actually, I need to make I need to do that. I need to remake it and then I need to retest it. So that's good, I think. So I check if it's uh, aligned to, let's say, 20 bytes, which will be a really weird thing. The answer is no. Require. Of course, memory issues, 16 equals that. Okay, that's fine. And what if I say, hey, it has to be aligned to 20 byte boundary. Very strange. Be aligned to twelve. Hmm. This is already a void star, so I don't even need to do that. I can literally just do that. All right, the first one is alignment. So what's going on in here? I need to do test. It's not this one, it's test. Resource. <laughs> so the offset is that sixteen bytes. So this thing is sixteen bytes. 32, 32, and then 8. Sorry, 4, 4, and 8. Oh, but that has to be, yeah, okay. All right, I can, it's 4 and a 4 and an 8. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. So I got an alignment of 20. So let's say I say offset is 16 to 32.
Am I crazy? No, it's the other way around, isn't it? What am I doing? It's this. God. How many times does this go into that? That's the question. And what's the remainder off of that, right? Or maybe not. I don't know what I'm doing. I've all my knowledge on memory stuff is gone. It's just gone. Poof. So it's alignment of 64. So this should be changed up to 64. What? What am I doing then? Am I doing anything correct? You know what? Okay, for, for, forget the alignment. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's gone. Who cares? Bam. So it's size of this plus that. Simple enough. We'll just keep it like that and then I'll figure out alignment some other day, maybe, if I actually care about it again. Because I am not capable of handling it today. Okay. Destruction. Destruction. All right. How do I destroy these things? There's two ways I can go about this. There's one where I can, let's say, give like a void, which we'll start p destroy function, which just takes in just the void star, right? The void star of the, the, the type. This could work. If I know what I'm bringing in at that time, but I may be, instead of that, I may be like calling another destroyer function somewhere else. I don't, I want to have a destroyer function like everywhere with me for all these create infos. Would that be too much? An extra pointer? Actually, that does give me a bit of an idea. I don't even need to do this, do I? I don't need a pdata. I don't need a pdata because what's going to happen is this is just going to be this plus size of uh, fo resource create info implementation. That's it. It's always that pl <clears throat> plus the size of that. So that's, yeah. So I can replace that pointer with the one for the destroy. Okay. So that, yeah, there's two ways I can go about this. Either I just have this, which I mean, it can work, but that's only if I'm going to always have the destruction in, uh, information with me on hand, which I may not. I, I mean, I probably will, but There's two ways to go about it. Um, there's that, and I'm going to have this, basically. Of course, you already know the type when you're passing it in. So if I pass it back out with that, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go with this. So replace the void star of the, uh, the, the data offset with this instead. And I want to put that before size. Make a bit more sense. Like this is data, these two is data that's going to be embedded in the object. This is some extra stuff required for creation. And then that's the actual object returned. So we got that. 
want to do, 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 do. These are two four, still two four bytes. So this whole thing should still be 16. T destroy function, lovely. If it's being passed in, I mean, it could just be an empty struct that had, you know, there's nothing special, in which case you just return, give a null pointer. And then on the destruction side, it converts it into that. Um, don't need all that. If p create info p destroy function not equal null pointer, then we actually do it with the p create info type. P create info. Uh, just forget whatever this is, which will shoot, which should compile right down since it's all local. And then we just free p create info. We're done. Okay, compile all that. This is now broken, that's fine. There's no actual code in here. That's also fine for the moment, I'll live with that. I'll add tests later offline, because it's super boring. But, as we're sitting right now, okay, I do want to have uh, something for a log. Create info ref count is greater than zero. Is this a warning? I mean, it's a warning rather than an error. You know, say, hey, you know, you're destroying things before you should be. Um, destroying. Say hey, so it's a void star of p create info. <sighs> Do that and that, so we can actually also pass in the type. Says the type and the exact location, and then I can have a verbose thing here saying, "Hey, you know, it's creating a this is a verbose type."
Actually, that'll be a bit more easier on the line. Because the first one will always be like the same size, which is whatever that is. Okay, let's just see if I can actually create a new. while there are more than zero references created. Okay. And then we can have a, a, a verbose thing that says, hey, no, just and this is a verbose one like that. with that I think I can so with all that out here in these in this place let's actually get rid of that for the moment remove that so this is the new stuff for our full resource Why did I create this? Because what's that? What is happening? I'm not, I'm still not. 100% sure on the destroy function. That's still kind of like bothering me a little bit. It really is. Set of functionality is Regardless of language, and type we'll just do that. Okay, it's been 54, 55 minutes. So I'll take a quick break, grab a drink, and BRB with uh, what the next step, which will be have to be, it has to be to do with actually using this in the new types in some form. It just has to be. So BRB. All right, so looking around, and thinking about it hard, create info is like incredibly integrated into faux resource base itself. So realistically, if I wanted to replace, I can't really replace one without the other. They kind of have to both go almost at the same time. So before I actually move on to actually like 
switching things over, I need to create, uh, do the same treatment as create info, where I have this kind of funky whatever going on here, and do the same thing for resource, because this was is also going to have a set of core mm, functionality, you know, resource ID, the type, the, the state, whether it's loading and reference count, use count, whatever. This <clears throat> is also going to be in a very similar... This needs basically the same thing, especially if it's going to be this same initial package of whatever needs to be reused um, for resources brought in, developed in other languages and brought in via plugins and stuff. It needs to have a basic set. I can't rely on C++ and inheritance and getting these functions down the line. I cannot. So, I now need to go ahead and do the same thing here. Resource, and then I got resource.h. I probably want to change this up a little bit in the future. Uh, so, 2022. If and if, oh, resource, resource, h. I'll probably also like merge these three headers together soon. If like this, if it's only just these three items, then it doesn't really, like I'll just have fo resource dot h and that's it. Even if it's part of a separate library like right here. So first part, create info. Okay. So we've got the C++, extern C stuff. Did the same thing kind of going on here. I need the handle, I need the error code. I basically need all three again. Handle for resource. For for resource type. I need kind of this, I think. So resource type. For resource type. So resource the uh, p resource something like this. Not create type either. It's just test that. I don't need that there. Okay, so resource.cpp, let's have a look at this, this side of the, of the equation as well. It's pretty big. Okay, so in space blah. Constructs for resource implementation. So what we got first thing is for resource ID. Is that something I even? Oh, this is from this. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure that out. That's gonna have to be shifted around. Um, ID. Resource type, type, ref count, use count, Ah, the re this needs to be passed in as well. Doesn't really matter what this is, yet, does it? Oh, it does. 
does. Does it? I don't know if it does or not yet. Hmm. I'll just leave it as that for the moment then. Uh, this is not found because I'm not. I, okay, I'll, for the moment, I'll just also bring in for DCS. So I can get that. Also need to include. What else? The type, the ref count, the use count, the resource functions. I have this. I also need like a loading state and the load state, which is still kind of this. This would actually be part of here. Loaded and failed. Those are the kind of three states I have. So that's brought in. That's atomic as well. Need to include that. Hmm. Okay, nothing is actually used here. So I can bring in simulation here for the moment. I have a whole bunch of atomic types going on here. I'm not really, oh, and I need the iteration. So it seems to be like, if I can actually properly control access to modifying this through functions, then I can actually get rid of a lot of the atomic bits of this and just like have the atomic sync. Uh, recurse apparently recurse of mutex I'm using. Is that that's just regular mutex header? So this is general count state. That's loading state. Then I add on the data after this right now I could just say like it's just um, the offset much like with the other type but this would be everything okay so functions let's start with some basic types. So we can get type. So it's for resource and resource. It's not for create info. It's just for resource type. Destroy resource. Create resource. Get type. Okay. So this isn't from here, this would be here. I need this, get ID. Get ID, get type. Um, do I need these functions? Not really. What do I use internally? Uh, loading. 
Okay, loading state. So I got the counts and then I got the state. that that and then I need to do something similar for get use count use count use count use count then I need to go through whoops is loading resource state Maybe the create info. I'm not sure how to deal with that quite yet. Maybe. Hmm. Is it loading? state and then the create in okay I'm not sure how to get the create info out hmm. or how to test for it or later 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 for the moment though I have this so let's just make these oh and then I need to get the data course even though I don't have any data to get quite yet void store for full resource get data that should be good that's gone 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 Oh, and the destroy function. Actually, that is true, isn't it? I don't actually deal with resource destruction yet at all. You can add to the pool, you can unload, but you cannot destroy resources yet. So this is going to be a new... Okay, so I also need to do something about that. So I've got the resource functions. This should have something for deleting it, though, right? No. Is it, that would be something that's kind of individual. Uh, destroy function. So that's something that's new as well. So I need to define handle casts for resource between that and that. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes. Um, Fores. For resource core, I guess I'll just call it that. That makes a bit, that makes enough sense. It's not really used that much anymore. Anyways, for resource core. Yeah, it'll only be used in a few locations. Okay. 
So first of all, it starts off with the resource implementation plus the size. And we need the error code. Yeah, how the hell am I doing this? Also, I need the ID, don't I? When I create a resource, I really do need the ID. Which is what, you know, one thousand or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay. P. Any resource. Any resource. Equals. I can't. I can't do an equals again. Unless is there some other way I can do this? Of course there is. Isn't there? Yes. There may be. It's a standard move. No, that'd be wrong. Ah, whatever. No, I malloced this, so I can't do that. And I'd, I would otherwise have to go through and set everything manually. No, this isn't. Hmm. So let's do a constructor. I have a constructor of some sort, let's say. This is pro resource ID ID. Type. What else? I have the p destroy function. I have two things. Actually, I have these functions. That, that, and then that. All the rest of this is not given, so. functions uh, no it's this type okay and then what we're going to do down here is where we have the new resource thing we just say hey you know this is a new in place, I can do this in place. P new resource. Um, of this type. With the constructor element. So ID type 
p resource functions, p destroy function, like that. That initializes everything correctly for these values, right then and there, no problem. I could probably technically do the same thing here, and I'm. Mm, I'll do it just in case I start adding more stuff. Great, great, great. That starts off with zero. That's fine. So I can also do on the way out. Delete this. P create info. Mm. Not sure how to do this actually. Let me double check what it says on the internet. CPP reference new. Placement parameters type, new type initializer. Okay. What about the delete? D delete. doesn't actually give me a good explanation of what it is. I may have to do something along the lines where I say, hey, this is a that. Well, I know what type it is already, right? It is, well, I know it's that type, so it needs to be that. Okay, and then I just free it afterwards. Right? Yeah. Okay, uh, I was here, so <clears throat> P resource equals this. Need to add a bit of a log and then I return success. Pro resource, I don't have to deal with the, I mean, I could create it at that. So I'll still have the pointer location, but I have a couple of other things I can work with. So I can do type, I can say ID type and that, yeah. So that'll be a thing that I reuse all over the place. But ID and type are, and then the pointer is secondary. I just have to use it for resource create info because I don't really have any other ide super identifying items for it. Yeah, okay. Resource to handle, blah, 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 blah. Then we gotta do something similar to on the delete side. Oh, and extern C. Bunch of stuff. I need to 
pull that in from wherever I'm getting it from. Or I can just struck it. So, destructor side. We do this, we've got the reference count. Okay, we can also add if reference count is, okay, if use count is greater than zero. So it's these two types. Resource ID resource. Reference count is none zero. Okay. Then we have to go through the delete function and this stuff, yeah. Okay, and then we just got a couple of boring items here. Okay, this actually changes up to be like specific to this type, please. Plus, minus, minus. Use count. Minus, minus, okay. So at this point is loading, blah, 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 blah. Return is loading. State. And then finally, we got this little thing, which is that, where it's, um, char star of this, plus size of the type that and that's common for all resources uh, another half hour on this okay is there anything else do I really care about s okay that's getting getting state getting loading use count mm-hmm Oh. So what about these other items? 
create info and that. I'm not entirely sure how to deal with that quite yet. Until I actually try to put this into implementation. But I guess I'm happy enough with those at the moment. So let's see if I can uh, fix up that. And this. And that logs. Twenty twenty two, twenty twenty two, okay. These are new, which I'll add just after this. So fix up, and then I got these items. New core implementation. How I'm going to go frame it right now. Get rebase dash item three or four. Fix that up. Typical resource created for object. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there for this session for the moment. Now that I have the basics of what I'm going to be starting to use. Next time will be a super long session, I am sure, actually going through and replacing both sets of elements or one or the other immediately. But actually, yeah, there's one last thing I could probably do today and that's deal with this error code thing, specifically talking about like the C implementation or um, if I actually get it to fire off again, save that file if I rerun the compiler It'll come out with a little, yeah, this little warning. Uh, error code is incompatible with C because I've got these. I'm going to see if there's another way I can do get uh, another way to get it uh, the type to easily convert from faux error code into a standard error code. Is there an easy way to do this? It has to be somewhere. I imagine. So I got to be able to get take this out somehow. So let me uh, just pause and think about how for the moment. Okay, how's about something like this? I, if I just move it out, like much like how this is already out here, I just move something to like here. So that stays like that. Fine. I have an inline which returns a this error type, which is like, and you have the function is just fo to error code, something like that, which is just that, which sets turn fo error code dot value equals value dot 
category equals p category. Okay, also changes the p category. Something like that. This is a C++ type, so I can actually, so this be a C, a C specific version. And then I'll have a C++ version for the standard error code type, which has basically kind of the same thing. Grab those two, okay. P category, okay. Ooh, not good. No viable conversion from standard error code to that. Hmm. There used to be a nice, easy. So that didn't work out, not easily. Um, okay, I can't think of a better way to do this. The system error type actually uses um, a template constructor, which is actually inside the class, which I can't do. This is as close as I'm going to get. So I'm just going to go around to wherever this is and do that, surround it like that. Not great. But Not the worst thing in the world. Hmm. Okay. Uh, your files need to have their updated copyright. One, two, three, and four. I didn't actually save that. Did commit. Okay, here we go. Deal with um, basic behaviors. 
such as Pointer. I forget what it's called. It's not that it's not like the type pointer. It's I mean, I suppose I could have error code like static um, asserts make sure it stays the correct size but still this this warning all over the place would be annoying as all hell And that's where I'll leave it for tonight. So, cheers.